Good evening and welcome back to an exciting episode of Are We Gonna Solve Some Riddles? Who knows? Um, because we don't do that in this game. This is almost a first. So let's find out if we can solve some riddles. Uh, you guys did find a secret entrance that led down a like a like a shaft in, deeper into the underdark earth and at the end of this shaft uh it was like kind of like a stone door was there but it doesn't move it doesn't open but it takes up about half the exit to the shaft on the other side of this is a room and that stone door uh which is just an extra slab similar to the one that you saw before the bridge uh on it are words written in draconic it says black and white are all to see drawn beyond the lines of reason this infancy separates body from the mind and then above that in all caps it says a minor test of logic if you guys were to enter the room you see five empty pedestals at the back of the room. Uh, just beyond those five empty pedestals is a door. And if you guys look to your right, you see five small shelves. Atop each one is a small black or white statue. What are the statues? The first one is white. It is of an Ahuzatl, which is a very stupid-looking creature. Uh, you guys may have seen this mini because I like to use it a lot. It's like a giant rat with an extra articulate hand on the end of its tail. I remember that guy. Yeah. I've used that in some one-shots before. I'm, I'm a fan of it. Definitely an interesting-looking mini. <laughs> The second one is an axe beak. It's a statue white. is black. An axe beak. Axe. It's like an emu, except its beak takes the shape of that of an axe. So it's like, like it looks like if it pecked a, a log, it would cleave it in half. So emus that are like naturally angry, aggressive birds, but with an axe. Yes. Sweet. Barbemos. And they don't sell insurance. They do <laughs> pretty. Next is the third shelf contains a white owl bear. The fourth contains a black behir. You guys know what that is? Mm -hmm. A Bahir is like um I have one. One sec. Is it when you've had it up to Bahir? <sighs> Such a bad one. <laughs> it is this multi-legged creature. Ooh. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. Well, it looks from, scary. It looks like our dog when he hasn't been fed. And then the final one is a white purple work. How do we know it's purple? <laughs> because you guys are familiar with what purple worms are. It's like the, um, like people have heard of it. Very few people have actually seen one, but people are aware. It's like we're aware of elephants. Mm. Unless we go to a zoo, we haven't actually really seen. Well, wouldn't this be a white worm? Uh, yeah, but white worms aren't actually a thing. Okay, all right. So, judging by the look it's of it, you guys know it would be a purple worm. white purple worm. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's a purple worm carved from white marble. It's both. Don't ask questions about it. <laughs> it was it was poorly worded on my part when I was coming up with this. Didn't think about the uh, confusion that it would cause. Oh, we're good. No one confused. We're just joshing you. <laughs> it's our group. Well, yeah. my name's not Josh. <laughs> well, purple worms are normally white, but here we are. 
Sick. Got me. Black and white for all to see. Crap. I need the, the riddle once again. Uh, yeah, stated. I'm sorry. Black and white are all to see. Drawn beyond the lines of reason, this infancy separates the body from mind. And then above that were the words, a minor test of logic. Um, how are the lines broken out? Is it, is it this infancy is the beginning of the third line? Where's the line breaks? This infancy is the third line. And then separates the body from mind is the fourth line. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a minor. Yes, you are. I test logic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have five pedestals, five, okay. Five pedestals and five statues. And a door on the opposite side of the room where you entered. Is the door locked? Would you like to test the door? I would. With logic? You test the door with your logic. It seems dumbfounded. No, oh. yeah, you, you try to open the door. It's locked. We confused it, guys. How unlogical. <laughs> Illogical, Captain. <laughs> All right, uh, anyone object for me putting these guys in, like, order of size? I mean, it's a start. I think the axolotl should definitely be in the middle. It makes the most sense. Being, you did say the axolotl was black and white, right? Uh, the axolotl is white. Oh, I wrote that down wrong. Is that the big rat with the hand? Yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Ignore oh. that fact. I uh, wrote, I pictured it wrong in my mind. Raj. Okay. And then I'm sorry. The owl bear is white. The light worm is white. The axolotl is white. The bahir is black. black. And then and so the axe is, the axe is black. Okay. And then black. the axe beak is black. I, call, I literally called it an axe emo. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I only put white axolotl. Big rat with extra hand for the first one. <laughs> white owl bear. White purple worm. And so do we black. need to separate it by color? Wait, oh, cool. did you, you, did you if I were to organize these by size, what would the order be on the pedestals? Uh, uh, if you were to organize them by size on the pedestals, it would be one, axe B, two, the Ahuzotl, three, Owlbear, four, Bahir, and then Purple Worm. Okay, that would put us at black, white, white, black, white. Do you have the riddle written, like typed up that you could copy paste so we stop making you repeat it? That's or a good call. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm a visual. Not exactly, but that's basically what oh. I think it is. I'll have to see you drawing me on the answer. Yeah, right there. And uh, where are these shel uh, the shelves that have the statues? They're on the... the right side of the room. These shelves are kind of built into the wall. So there's five lines to this riddle, and there's five pedestals? Um, there's four lines to the riddle. The minor test of logic part is part is like the, it's like the heading that you guys see. Above oh, okay. it. gotcha. <laughs> now this is the part where we'll get really quiet and stare. <laughs> and just think. <laughs> I mean, there's no... Set up in a thinking chair, think. Um, think. Think. I want to start moving stuff around, and then uh, you guys let me know if you come up with something. All right, I mean... I just, I, I don't know, I don't like just kind of sitting around, I kind of just want to move, so I'm just going to start doing okay. stuff, and... All right, we'll I will warn you, 
If you hear anything move, stop, please. Okay. <laughs> and Roland begins putting them in order of size from left to right. You you put them in order of size, exactly how we just discussed. And um, what happens is they are now organized in mm-hmm. from from smallest to biggest. Did, I, can, did anybody inspect the pedestals just to make sure there's nothing written or weird about them? I'm going to save you the time. Nothing weird about the pedestals. Sweet. Okay, I hate that we spent all this time and he's like, fun fact, it was labeled and they were out of order. <laughs> what? There would never be symbols on the claw that we're putting into the magical. Thank you. <laughs> that's, yep, yeah, that's what, yep. Yeah. It's, it's like a mystery from an RPG where all the clues are highlighted for you to grab. What are you talking about, dude? That's, that's exactly how all the puzzles I solve are. It's <laughs> a perfect, perfectly logical security system. Put the answer code on the key. <laughs> The password if I forget? Is password. Yeah. yeah. What if yeah. I forget, dude? No, sh- that's so dangerous. <laughs> it, it worked for our purposes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it kept us out for a while, so. <sighs> All right. Um, nothing happened. I'm going to go ahead and put them. Uh, no particular order, I guess. I'll start because it's going right now. It's going black, white, white. Black, whites. So I'll switch out uh, the owl bear with the black behir. So that they're now white, black, white, black, white, black. No, I think that adds in white. Fuck. Okay. I have to All right. White. <laughs> so what's first? All right. First is going to be the owl bear. Actually, hey. no. The I'm gonna the big rat the 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 Cthulhu. Damn it! No, what is it called? Axolotl. The Ahuzotl. Yes, <laughs> the Ahuzotl will go first. Then I'll put the axe beak. Then I'll put the owl bear. Then I'll put the behir. Then I'll put the purple worm. So the order they were on the shelf, I uh, just put them on the thing. It, it's yeah. You, you do that. Mm, nothing happens. Hmm. What if we were to take all the statues off and just all of them off at the same time? Yes, you could do that. There are enough of you. Yeah. So there's no statues. <laughs> grab them all. You, you lift them all up at the same time, and now you're all holding a statue. Nothing happens, I assume. No. Can we put them all black first and then all white after? Yeah. Nothing happens? Nothing happens. Mm. So, uh, um, this is Edgar. Do I know anything about these beasts at all? Like their intelligence, how smart they would be. These are not considered intelligent creatures. All right. None of these stand out as way more intelligent than the others. Correct. Okay. Well, I'm kind of good at the end of my rope here. I might just uh, smash one and see what happens. I don't. Uh, uh, that's where I'm at with this, guys. You rattle it. I mean, if it if it rattles, sure, I'll let you smash it. But I don't All see right. much point if it doesn't rattle. I'll I'll shake the the small one. So I'll, I'll shake the axe beak. It does not rattle. Mm. All right. Please do not smash it, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be a poor decision. Yeah, but in look, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm out of ideas. I'll be honest with you. I'm not I'm not a real big thinker guy. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of like all I got. So. so we've taken them all off. We've put them all on one. I don't think that would do anything. They wouldn't be able to fit all on one. Okay. Okay. So they're a decent size then. Mm-hmm. Like, can we? For just doing whatever, can we put them in order of like life expectancy? It's because of the line beyond infancy. <laughs> yes, roll me a nature check. How about we just pretend that you tell me no and this won't work? <laughs> um, it's only a nine. You're not really sure what the life inspect- expectancy is for each of these species. Do any of them look like like babies? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry, Susie. Go ahead. I was making a stupid comment. Don't worry. Those are the best comments. Have you seen our games? (laughs) (laughs) 
I was asking, do any of them look like babies? Oh. No. Hmm. Do we know of any religious connotations with these animals? Religion check. Guys, is there any religious connotations? Because I don't know much about religion. Does anybody else? I only know a bit. I know a bit. From I the, could give it a the Lord Protector, but that's okay. it. And apparently, I don't know very much. <laughs> <laughs> I just put my hand, fingers in my temple. <laughs> you no. don't know very much. No. Thank you, voice in the sky. You're welcome. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be so simple, and we're really going to. That's how all riddles are. <laughs> just for fun, I put them in alphabetical order. Oh, you put them in alphabetical order, and it's a good thought. Nothing happens. Cool. <laughs> it right. was, actually. Hear me out. Reverse it. <laughs> Flip it and reverse it. Yep. You reverse it. Nothing happens. Yeah. No. Susie, you're, it says that you're coming up with all like the really good ideas here. I'm pretty much at smash it, and this isn't going to work. <laughs> so, I mean, how solid does that door look? Oh, so solid, man. Being a dwarf, you're familiar with like stone. This is this is some stone. You know, this is more stone than Roland's last name. Damn, it's pretty stone. Yeah, a stone. A bit of rock in there. Rock and stone. There, there might be a rock in there. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's behind the stone. Get on that. Mm -hmm. You guys are on the right track. Keep thinking. I said I'm on the right track with the smashing stuff, guys, so I think I'm going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend that. <laughs> that was the last course of action I recommended. He said it's the right track. I'm going for it. <laughs> Leroy Chickens! <laughs> yeah, no, I'm dumb, but I'm... Yeah, I'm, the guy, I'm the guy they put in beta test and be like, oh, well, yeah, someone's going to try that, I guess. We're going <laughs> to precautions. Which one are you smashing? Oh, I'm not smashing anything. I'm joking. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Let's give it a f I say let's give it a few more minutes of us trying to brainstorm. If we cannot come up with anything here in a little bit, we'll consider smashing. There's definitely an order. <laughs> I'm hoping that if we break the order something will happen like there's gonna be like a fail safe if someone completely fucks this up i just can't imagine it's gonna be like an easy way out of here you break the purple it, worm and a purple worm emerges that's kind of where i'm thinking about it but i'm like well purple worm or puzzle and honestly if it bleeds you can kill it so take my like chances the, with the purple worm at least that's i'd like to worm. remind you that roland can also bleed <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Well, there's, if I'm doing it right, does that mean there's 120 options for lining it up, right? So can we just call that a good solid, like, what, three hours of us just putting Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just constantly. Just, we're going to just verbalize that we keep <laughs> trying out different paths. This one goes <laughs> there. <laughs> what orders have we tried already? Hang on. <laughs> I lost it? track. Who was writing this down? <laughs> I feel like Vanderin would be the one who wrote, uh, wrote this down as we just keep lifting everything up and changing the pedestal order. We're going to miss one. I'm going to be like tired, like, yeah, we did that one. And it's like, <laughs> we just miss it. The riddle is written in common, right? Draconic. Draconic. Draconic, sorry. Can. Did the door have like a knob or anything or like a lock? It does not have a lock. And it doesn't have a knob. It has a handle. Wait, 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 wait. It's, uh, I, okay. Okay. I think Can I got push something. instead of pull? Because I'm going to be my ad. <laughs> so, like, what if we were to do it? What if this is something about interactionism? Something interacting with one of these statues. So it's like a transition. 
one of these statues is a weird creature with a bunch of hands. Another one is a mammal with a hand. And the next one is a mammal with a beak. Then the next one is a bird. The next one is a worm with hands next to a complete worm. There is a little bit of a, re a relation to each one of them. And if you were to put them all in somewhat of an order like that. Like, I don't like know, evolution -wise, evolution What's that? Like evolution wise or like based on hands? No, based <laughs> off of what one, you put one next to the other one based on what, how, kind of like a pattern. So like, say for instance. The what whole, order would you put it in? Okay, I'm, I'm just kind of throwing, doing a shot in the dark here. So I would start off with the white purple worm. Okay. And then uh, black Bahir. Okay. And that's a worm with hands. Then a white hot Wahoto. Okay. Uh, then the white owlbear. And then black axe beak. Okay, when you do that, nothing happens. What if I were to do it in reverse? Yeah, so you go to uh, to take down which which two do you want to grab first? Uh, black axe beak and white purple worm, and kind of swap them around in the exact opposite order, or order I had it. Yeah, so you pick up the the black axe beak and you carry it over to uh, trade it out with the white purple worm. Except when you reach out for the white purple worm, it doesn't move. Does it mean you got it right? I got something right. So it was the worm that's in the right spot? Mm -hmm. Worm is in the right spot, and it's in and the first spot. And that was spot number one? I try to move the next one, the, the Bahir. Does that move? The Bahir moves. Okay, so the Bahir moves. Does the owlbear move? The owlbear moves. The axe beak move. You have the axe beak in your hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the, right. the axle. Whole <laughs> the the wajito, whatever it's called. <laughs> that moves. Okay. So, white purple worm, we're on track. Everything else, okay, cool. So, that theory didn't quite line up. But now but we know that. Was, like, I want to put, put the, the axe black, black Bahir on the very end, on the other end, opposite to the purple worm. Okay, you put it on that pedestal. All right, does it move afterwards? You want to try and pick it up? I do. Yeah, you can't pick it up. Okay, we're on this. I, I got this. I, I have an idea. So in the two inner ones, I have the two ones on the outside and the two ones going slightly inward. Then at that point, I'm going to put the axe beak on one of those. The axe beak onto which one? It's going to be the one next to the white purple worm. All right, you place it on that pedestal. Does it move? When you try to pick it up? Yeah. It does not. Okay, so the one next to the black, but here I'm gonna put the white owl bear. Does it move? It does. As not. I try to pick and then in the one in the center should be the white ahuetl. Oh, my bad. Yeah, it does you are able to pick the owl bear back up. Okay, I put the white ojuato there. Yeah, now now it doesn't move. Okay, white owl bear will be in the center then. Yeah. Does it move? That's it the does last not. one. Okay. As, as you place it there, you hear a click from the closed door. <sighs> My head hurts. <sighs> so what order did we end up with? Because I had a hard time keeping track of that. So now you have Purple Worm, Axe Beak, Owlbear, Ahuzotl, and Bahir. The logic that I came up with, sorry, it seemed convoluted. I'm probably, anybody who's watching this video is going to get a headache. <laughs> so it's kind of like I was just opposite colors on each end, but similar creatures. So a white Purple Worm on one side, then black. Randall or Bahir from on one side, then Axe Beak, Owlbear, both of them have eat beaks. It's a weird. It got you there, but it's like when you get the right answer using the wrong equation. <laughs> oh, that's how I got to college. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, so I, that's I always hated that show your work stuff because I was always yeah. like, yeah, honestly, it's like, oh, I'm yeah, I'm great I guess at I'm guessing that. things, but my logic is flawed quite yeah, often. You absolutely got it. I thought we were on the Dude. same track. Like, once you got the worm in the first and then the last one was, I think, was correct, I was like, oh, or I can't remember what point I was like, I think it was like the second one. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And I thought we were on the same page. And then you just explained your logic and you confused the hell out of me. I have no idea how you got the right answer with this i have no idea what the i i'm glad you got it because i have no idea what's going on like so, the, the amount of legs everything has yeah i mean it makes Is that sense what it was? but the amount of yeah. hands oh yeah from fewest to yeah the most amount of legs none yeah and then yeah i think it's when you put the black beer here on the end and then it was like oh that one doesn't move. i was like oh okay that one with the most legs on that one makes end. so much no more eggs sense there. That's exactly what I was going for all along, guys. I knew yeah, man, you fucking nailed it, dude. I, I would have gotten exactly there. That's exactly what I was going for, dudes. Yeah. Um... You got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> My head hurts. Well, I'm glad I didn't smash anything. Uh, <laughs> let's hope they get easier from here. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Truly, they start with the toughest riddles. And then get easier from then. I think that's how that works, right? You want to keep the dumb people out, and then you know, it just kind of yeah. gets easier from there. It's less like... puzzles to reset if you start at the, if you start with the hardest first. Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. That's yep. why would you, why would you do it the other way around? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Does anybody have any wizard style aspirin? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> So you guys open the next, uh, you open this door leading uh, on. You're faced again with another short hallway. And at the end of this hallway, you see the exact same thing. It's a giant stone slab with more writing on it in Draconic. <clears throat> this one says a modest test of wisdom. Crap. And beneath it, it says, there is no easier mission showing only bits and pieces till your sight betrays you with empty elocution. In this room, there is a single doorway standing in the very center of the room. And it is just a doorway. There are no walls or anything. There is a doorway with a door. There is a shadow being cast on the opposite side of this door. And on the very opposite side of the room is your exit. It is another door just like the kind from the previous room. Except from the handle of this one hangs a key on a chain. Okay, so what was that uh, riddle again? It's no easier mission showing only bits and pieces till your sight betrays you with empty elocution. Can we also get that written down? I'm writing that down right now. Sight betrays you with empty elocution. So it's no easier mission. No easier mission to your sight betrays you with empty elocution. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I try for the door in the center. Is it locked? It is locked. I go over to the doorway with the key. How long is the chain? Um, so it, it's actually just hanging there. It's not attached. Oh. So you're okay. able to pick it up and swing it around. Okay. Yeah, hang it around your neck. Yeah, I, I just pick it. It's a cradle kind of a thing. No, I, I just grab it and I take it to the doorway and try it on the door that's in the middle of the room. You take that key over to the door in the middle of the room. And as you approach it, you realize that the door has no keyhole. Roland, close your eyes and just jam it in there. Don't worry about it. Raj, close my eyes and just start jamming it, like, into the door, full force. <laughs> into the door now, Roland. Into I the door don't know. My eyes are closed. <laughs> I just start jamming. Just like in Roland's love life, this tactic does him no favor. <laughs> I, 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 I ghost him and I kind of lead his hand. I'm just imagining the whole thing like, what's that movie where you got the ghost helping her make the pottery? 
That ghost. Ghost. <laughs> yeah, ghost. Yeah. I'm just imagining that only you're helping him put the key Yes, that is what the reference was. <laughs> where are you leading his hand? To the 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 doorknob. Uh, yeah, you said there was a doorknob, right? Or is there no doorknob at all? There's there it, it's a handle again. There's right. no knob. Um, <laughs> but there's also no keyhole in yeah, either no. door. I'm just I'm just gu so. guiding him to nothing basically but towards the handle then i jam the key into the handle as vanarin instructs me with his hand as a <laughs> very <laughs> majestic patrick stoys he once said you just hear metallic clanks and uh a song sung by anya in the background did you guys already try to Which go through the nothing wall uh, no we haven't i have something to do by closing me. your eyes yep. <laughs> Sorry, I had to step out of the room for a quick second. What does the first door does that have a keyhole? There's no keyholes in either door. Is there a keyhole in any of the walls? There's give me an investigation. Roland is blindly jamming the key into the air. <laughs> I think you could stop now. Um, I don't six. think it's working. I think I'm there. Almost. My rolls yeah, are garbage. You don't find the keyhole in the wall. Wait, so there is a wall? Well, you're in a room. I thought you said there were no walls, just a doorway. Which There's no key. The, so the doorway in the middle of the room. Yeah. Is not connected it's just to a door frame with a door in it. There's no walls attached to the frame. Did we go around to the other side of the door to see if there's a keyhole on the other side of the door? Nobody has. Would you like to do that? Sure. There is no keyhole on the other side of the door. Give me a perception check. It's a natural 20. I don't know if that's what I want to have a natural 20 on, but that's what I got it on. You see something out of the corner of your eye. The shadow of the door that's being cast from the center of the room. There's a keyhole in that shadow. Guys, there's a keyhole in the shadow. Oh, Roland. Open your yeah. eyes. Stop oh. the ground. <laughs> I, I open my eyes and I just, like, wherever I'm standing, I just stab the key into the ground. <laughs> In the shadow, Roland. I, I don't want to move. I don't want to lose sight of it. And I was like, come here. Oh, okay. He runs to Susie and like looks at what she's pointing at, if there's anything there. Does he see yeah, it? Yeah, you, you see it too. Oh, okay. Uh, Roland sticks the key in the shadow. So you're going to take the key and jam it into the ground? Yeah, the ground where the keyhole is for the shadow. Yeah, the key collides with the ground. Ah. All right. Roland is going to go up to the door and kind of just wave his hand until he sees. Is it like a light on the ground that he sees, or that there's, he's seen? there's no light, just a shadow? Oh, what does no Susie see? What, what does Susie see with the keyhole then, or <laughs> what do you see, Susie? <laughs> Susie sees a shadow being cast of a door on the ground, and Susie. in the shadow door. There is a keyhole where there's the a keyhole shape where there's no shadow. Okay, so there's that's light, correct? For the keyhole, that's light. Yeah, it's not shadow, but it's not light. Okay, if I were to wave my hand like around the door, does the keyhole ever disappear if I were to walk back and forth in front of the door? No. Okay. How about if I go over to the other side and do the same thing? No. If we took the key and tried to get the shadow of the key to match up with the shadow of the door in the shadow, would that work? Who has the key and is doing this? Yeah, Roland passes the key to Susie. You know what you're doing. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're holding the key mm -hmm. and you kind of like you hold the key out like you're trying to find the shadow, you mm -hmm. do see the shadow of just your hand holding a key. But there's no shadow of the key? There's a shadow of your hand holding the key. Gotcha. And I try to put it towards the keyhole. You guide the shadow of the key toward the shadow of the keyhole? Yeah. You're able to get it in there. I turn it. <laughs> Don't let it go. You hear two clicks. The door in the center of the room, as well as the door for your exit, both swing open. Mazel tov. Lahayim. I don't know what that means. I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Is Yay. the door frame just a door frame? What's that? 
Is the door frame just a door frame? The door frame is just a door frame, but now your mm -hmm. exit is also open. I'll walk through it for good luck, <laughs> and then uh, continue over to the new newly opened door. You guys are really yeah. rolling with this stuff. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you look, it was, you were right, man. It was just going to get easier from here. Uh, yeah, it's easier. <laughs> you head through the newly opened door, and again, same deal. Hallway with a new inscription at the end of it. This one is labeled a medium test of strength. And the words are, cater to the hollow, screaming, feed me here. Fill me up again, temporarily pacify this hungering. Conquer this and devour, bridle all this indiscretion, long enough to edify and permanently fill this hollow. I don't think I want to feed. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't seem like a great idea. As you walk into this room, you see two things. On the left-hand side of the room is a very small pedestal, a short pedestal, almost just like a, like a dais. It's very wide. And it holds a perfectly spherical stone of marble. Uh, on the right-hand side of the room, carved still from marble, is the massive head of a dragon, its mouth gaping open. I rage run at the marble and try to shove it down the dragon's throat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need a strength check as you try to lift this marble stone. That seemed way too obvious, so we're probably... <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Someone's got this. The barbarian figured it out, so I mean, we're in trouble. 20. <laughs> what was it? 20. You're able to, you strain, and everybody sees this vein in Roland's forehead begin to pulse and pop. And you're able to lift this massive marble spear. I now need a strength check to try and get it across the room to the dragon's maw. You got it. Rocky theme intensifies. Does he need guidance? Ooh, yeah, baby. 22. Oh, never mind. Yeah, you, you, Everybody watches in awe as your face turns a bright beet red as you you get this marble stone over to the dragon and you're able to give me one more strength check. Got it. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Guidance. Good one. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Hang on with guidance. Can you have double guidance? No. <laughs> okay. Ooh, four on that guidance. 26. I start coaching you like Mickey in the background. Oh, you push that marble sphere. Wait, like in... Mickey? Mickey from the Rocky movies? Oh, not like Mouse. Thanks, no, Mick. I got this one. <laughs> Who's going to lift that rock? Who's going to put that rock in that dragon's mouth? You <laughs> Put him in the ground. <laughs> That's so much better than like, woohoo. Who's going to put the rock in the mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's in the dragon's <laughs> mouth. Uh, Roland, They're doing rock. <laughs> having successfully done that, we'll now sit on the ground. That's all I got. <laughs> um, I, I thought something was going to happen. I'm going to go stand uh, near the pillar and see if there's any though that the held the rock and see if there's anything different about that pillar. Nope. Sure I is. told you there's more to this. Do dragons, cool, do dragons eat axe emus or owl bears? <laughs> do we need to go feed him the other statues? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it's a bad because they were stuck, which is good. Um, so once you get this marble spear over to this massive dragon's head, it sits there in its mouth, being held in place by its bottom two uh, fangs. And it rests on the edge of its tongue. But there's still, you, you do see that there's quite a lot of room. Like comparatively, the, the marble stone is pretty small compared to the dragon's head carving. Is there another um, marble somewhere in here? There's not another marble somewhere in here. 
Somebody mm. give me a perception check. I gotcha. My rolls are complete garbage. Roland tries Four. to lift the pillar. Uh, yeah, focus uh, is not focusing. And at all. The pillar does not budge. Mm. Um, if I were to look at the jaw of the dragon, like right here, is there like any pins or anything that look like it's like mechanical, like the jaw moves at all? You don't see any pins, but you do see that it's not one solid piece, that the bottom of the jaw is separate from the rest of the head. Uh, I guess we got to do some hungry, hungry hippos. Uh, Roland, you want to you try to crush this rock in this dragon's mouth? Okay, I'll try my best. And <laughs> Roland will once again will grab on, I guess, to the bottom. Which part looks like it moves? The top down or the bottom up? Um, Vanarin, you see that it looks like it would most likely be bottom up. Uh, looks like you got to lift the boulder and the mouth. And also oh. with enough force to crash. Crack the uh, rock. Uh, if only right. we had the ability to make someone bigger. Right. <laughs> Roland grabs on to the, the bottom, basically lip of the mouth. He goes into another rage, flexing all his muscles and with all his strength, tries to close this jaw. Strength. Go. All right. Was there, was there I like got a hinge or something? I have another roll, but I rolled a natural 20. All right, 21, but yeah, natural 20 on the first one. All right. For a total of 23. What was your question, Focus? Oh, I was asking, uh, is there like a hinge on the bottom jaw or something? That That's what I was looking no. for. But Vanner is... already looked for that. There wasn't. Okay, so he's just muscling the statue. He's he's muscling the statue. And you okay. see him, he gets it down underneath the bottom jaw, and he grabs, and he begins to squat thrust his way through it. And you see that this jaw is, being, is moving up. And as he's pushing it upward, that marble stone begins to roll backward into the back of the dragon's throat, where you see it kind of fall into a small little alcove. And the door, the exit for this room, opens up. All right. Maybe you didn't have to crack, crook it, but, uh, you know, it's solved it anyways. That's all I got, like. Period. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was very vision. excited. I, I had one. I got one. It said test of strength, and I was like, oh, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the moment Van read that on the door, I was like, oh, perfect. This one's for me. I, I can't read Draconic, but yes, when, when's, uh, when someone when's... read that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to the next room. Right. Sound good to you guys? Down the next hallway, and again, once again, you guys see, uh, <clears throat> you see another slab. This one labeled a major test of spirit, and the draconic etchings on this one say, "Lunge in, tooth and soul, longing for another win. Lurch into the fray, weapon out, soulfully in. Warrior struggling to remain consequential." In this room, in the very center of the room, you see what must be a 20-foot tall statue of a dragonborn. Uh, out from this dragonborn is spread in a 20-foot wide wingspan, angel wings. This statuesque dragonborn looks down at you guys, and he has an outstretched hand. Uh, if you guys kind of like do like the sidestep, it almost looks like this statue is somewhat following your movements around the room. Behind this statue, uh, on the other side of the room, a much, much larger statue. This one is a full-on carved from marble dragon, 60 foot, to uh, 60 foot tall, and its wingspan is at least 100 foot wide. And again, this one has angelic wings. In front of the smaller dragonborn statue, uh, you see what looks like a casket or sarcophagus.
All right. Uh, from the sounds of it, we might have a fight coming up. Uh, so which angle? Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, that, that's what I was going to say. So is the Dragonborn facing a different tra- angle than the dragon? Nope. Uh, they're facing at you as you walk into the room. They see you it, almost as if you like if they were alive, they were expecting you. Can we change the angle? Are they, and they're standing perpendicular to each other? How do you mean? Like standing, like hypothetically, if we wanted to go over to the dragonborn and maybe rotate him or twist him around the face of the dragon. Oh, so that yeah, he is yeah. lurching at the dragon with weapon ready into the fray. He holds no weapon, but also uh, a quick inspection upon the pedestal of which he stands, you would not be able to spin. Okay. Is there a weapon set somewhere around the floor? The there is room? not. Okay. <laughs> All right, hear me out. We jump in the casket. That was going to be my guess, to be honest. So I'm with Roland here. But uh, well, first, we probably should. Oh, man, this looks casket. great for me, Van, but not so good for you. I know that's the problem. <laughs> All right, the oh, casket man. would only hold one person at a time. Mm. Well, I, 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 I want to see what's in the casket before we jump in it. So, uh, what does it's it look? Just, what does it look like? Spikes. when we open it. It's empty. Oh, it's, okay. And, and there, wait, is there spikes in the casket? No, that's me making shit up. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't he is look. There's nothing in the casket. It's empty. My character uh, looks and is like, I know my, I know I look like I'm getting along in age, but I don't. I wasn't planning on jumping into a casket this soon. <laughs> well, it's up to you. If we only can do one at a time, uh, if it's some kind of trap, I have probably the one that could take the biggest beating. Yeah. Uh, it might be even referencing you. I might be looking into it too much, but uh, this might be a uh, a rematch for you. Wait, did we? Never mind. You already had that rematch. Yeah, I already beat the <laughs> shit out of that stone that rock. Guy. I never don't know mind. if you noticed that, man. I nailed that stuff. <laughs> Let's, uh, so, no, I was referring to the dude that uh, beat you up uh, a long time ago. Oh back, no, uh, dude. Yeah, he would lay me out again. I would not. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I pick my fights a little bit better now. I'm hoping to maybe get stronger, but yeah, after, uh, you know, kind of getting my ass kicked, like pretty much every single like past day for the past, like two weeks, uh, it's pretty humbling experience. Uh, honestly. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So Uh, yeah, that, that Boulder big win for me feels really good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you can jump in the casket. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Well, like I said, I mean, if anyone can at least take a bit of a beating from a trap, it'd be me. Uh, but I'm just all right. If I get trapped in there, you get good luck and roll the jumps inside the fucking thing. <laughs> all right, you jump inside. Does anybody want to close the lid? Uh, well, if he's still there when uh, he jumps in, if he doesn't like disappear or anything like that, um, I'll say, uh, good luck in there still there (laughs) (laughs) it gives him a thumbs up before he closes the lid yeah all right uh roland i need you to either roll me a charisma or a constitution saving throw hell yeah and just like that one of other our other party members is playing dead (laughs) (laughs) maybe not playing yeah i was gonna say maybe not playing because i just rolled shit on that i rolled a nine a nine nine on a constitution saving throw all right you have a plus six to that Wow. All right. Roll terrible. Oh, that's okay. Uh, So you guys, what you see is Vanarin shuts the lid to this casket. And after a couple moments, Roland, you feel kind of like like a rush of forced air just careen into your chest. And everybody else, you hear kind of a, a muffled thud. Just to double check, when um, Roland, when you went into the casket, did you take all your weapons with you or did we leave them out? Oh, yeah, I took everything. I, I wouldn't have left them. 
Okay. Those like axes that yeah they don't. don't <laughs> Van's one hundred percent right. And I am the weapon. <laughs> Throwing axes like he's strapped on me, though. But uh, um, when, me. when I hear the thud, uh, I'll open up the casket. Uh, say, Wait, are you all right? You fell over? <laughs> <laughs> Did you fall over? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's still in there and uh, he's just kind of rubbing his chest. Uh, oh. I don't know what just happened, but. It wasn't good. I, I don't think I did good. Someone else might need to give it a shot. I don't re- I don't recommend sending any more people into the casket for the time being. I mean, I don't feel so good, but I'm not like dead, so I don't think it's a super bad how idea. Much, how much damage did you take? I took. Uh, I'm fine. I mean, like I'm hurt, but like you didn't take any damage. Yeah, oh, I no. feel like feel like a gut no. punch more than anything, okay. you know. What we don't know is he has a curse that'll kill him in three days. <laughs> Van, don't talk like that. Come on, man, that's really scary. <laughs> I didn't say that as Van. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say I didn't ask if you needed healing as focus. I was asking. That's just as Bradley who thinks that we're currently trying to play. Average. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're playing Dark Souls. All right, Roland uh, <laughs> slowly gets out of the coffin. And is like, well, I think somebody else needs to give it a shot. I mean, um, you said the statue follow us, follows us. Is it more like a Mona Lisa illusion kind of thing when it follows us? Yeah, it's more like an illusion. It doesn't actually move. Okay. I go reach out to touch the statue. Is the statue actually there? Where are you touching it? On its face? Is it she was on the statue. <laughs> uh, the statue. Uh, is it, how tall is the statue? That's a good It's pretty part. tall. Okay. It, it's tall, including the dais that it's on. It's about uh, 12 feet tall. All right. So I'm going to be touching whatever is at arm length for me. Like, whatever would be like, whether yeah. that's like. You weight. reach out and touch feet. Okay. It's real. It's there. So if I walk around in circles around this statue, do the feet rotate or no? Is it just still an illusion? No, the, the feet also do not rotate. Okay, so nothing's... It's just an illusion that it seems to be following us. All right. Just an illusion. What's the other dragon doing? It is also a statue. It, yes. It's doing statue. Statuey things? It, what it is this pose, statue. I'm assuming? Is its pose just kind of like a sitting dragon, or is it like roar? Or it's it's not sitting, but it's not roar. It's kind of like up on its hind feet, and its wings are spread in a very like action pose, but a but not a hostile one. So similar to the dragonborn in front of you, how he like beckons you toward, like how he beckons you with his hand. Uh, the the dragon is just kind of up and in. Uh, pose that you can see it's grandeur. So if you we, know what? Uh, I'll go into the casket. All right, Spirit he's going to go into the casket. Susie, what was, what were you questioning? Um, how, does the dragonborn's hand? It looks like it's like reaching out. You said. So, like, if we, I grab his hand real fast. You I'll are play. too short to grab his hand. Vanarin. <laughs> Is it like out flat? Is it like? As if it was yeah. holding something, but not like an action figure, or so like down towards you, but its hand, its palm is up. Okay. Uh, and how high is the hand? The hand is maybe about eight feet off the ground. Oh, so right. it's probably not wanting anybody to grab its hand. Okay, I was thinking either hold its hand or put something in its hand, like go up and just out of curiosity. But... All right, focus. Wait. Have a good time in the coffin. And I close I'm, gonna, the on his I'm gonna go in there with my pistol out and ready to go. Weapon I can drawn. put anything, anything okay. less than ten pounds in the hand if you want to put anything in the hand, Susie. Um, <laughs> roll me charisma is probably your best bet, isn't it, Warlock? Yep. Roll me charisma. Saving throw. Yep. All right, here we go. Fifteen. As the lid shuts, there is a small moment of silence. 
This time you guys hear that same thing that you heard when Roland was inside, but this time it is accompanied by a flash of blue light coming from the, the cracks in the casket between the lid and the actual container itself. Uh, focus, you feel that collision with your chest and then it, it's like you've almost forgotten how to breathe. My chest hurts and I can't breathe. What's that? We can't hear you inside the coffin. <laughs> I think it's done. I open the coffin. <laughs> the, as you open the lid to the casket, you see focus and he's able to lift himself up his eyes shine a brilliant blue shove him at something the dragons i don't know <laughs> and he looks from each of you to another to another to another until he's looked at all of you and as he looks into your eyes you see nothing but a brilliant blinding flash and your vision just goes and as you wait for a moment, your vision does start to come back. And as you look around, now all of you have eyes shining with a brilliant blue. Does Do these eyes look similar to the Bahamut people? Very. What do those statues look like now? They look the same. Like, like statues, okay. But now we got blue eyes. Yeah, and now you got blue eyes. eyes. With our new vision. Give me a perception check. Why don't you look around? Hey, guys, you should all do that, too, because I can't see. <laughs> uh, can't confirm. I'm blind. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. You're more distracted by the differences in your vision. Oh. Ryoko, you see in the massive pedestal upon which the gigantic dragon stands, you see a small uh, series of lines, almost like a, uh, a hidden doorway. And it's like a, uh, an ethereal light is coming from the other side of that doorway. Oh, am I dying? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he says. Follow the door. <laughs> no context. <laughs> don't they say don't follow the light if you think you're dying? This is true. <laughs> Ryoko, why do you think you're dying? Uh, I, I see mean, a light and a, a door, and I just reach out to touch it. Oh, wait. So you don't think you're dying? Yeah, you can go for the door. That's fine. <laughs> So you cross the rest of the room and you reach out to touch this door and as you touch it, it swings open leading to another hallway. Guys, come on, come with me. Ooh. I don't know if they're, they can come with me or if they're seeing it, but I hold out my hand for anyone who wants to come with. I come with! Yeah, follow. All right. All right. This hallway leads you uh, it, it's very short compared to the others and as you 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 get to the end uh there is no slab with more engravings on it instead it leads you to a massive underground cavern uh you can see the ceiling is about maybe 200 feet above you give her uh, like as a guesstimate and the cavern itself uh you are about um maybe 300 feet from wall to wall it is truly very large. You see in the very center, off in the distance, you you just see what looks like might be a small chest. Um, is there any ramps or anything in this cavern, or is it mostly just open, flat plain? It is open and flat. Is Roland going to climb into the chest now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Roland uh, rushes headlong across the cavern to reach this chest, you know, so that he can jump into it, which is the only logical thing to do, of course, in this situation. Uh, as you approach Roland, you see something resting on the other side of this 
chest, it looks like a giant metal faceplate for a large creature. <laughs> I stop uh, immediately in my tracks. You stop immediately in your tracks. Who who else is with him? Did anybody rush forward with him, or are you all kind of hanging back? Me. <laughs> Didn't run. With Thanks, Rio. I appreciate you. Having I, my I walked. <laughs> I'm like, I, I walked. Yeah. In my chest. I, I walked and approached warily. Okay. Uh, so you're all able to see this thing, and as you stand there, kind of regarding it to see what it might be, uh, you feel the floor beneath your feet begin to tremble slightly. This metal face mask lifts up, and around it becomes just wreath in flame. And you can see this thing begin to take shape. And with one massive claw, it rests its hand on the chest that you stand in front of. We couldn't hurry and shut it. <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant it was coming out of the chest. Nope. Oh, sorry. Just I was like, shut it. <laughs> it, uh, it regards all of you, and it speaks in Draconic. Who here speaks Draconic? I do. Right. Cool. It, it speaks. It's, it says in, in a deep, ancient voice, Five individuals do I see, yet only one soul before me. I look around and say, who has a soul? Not me, I'm broken. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently only one of us has a soul, guys. Uh, oh, no. What is it? Is it because it's speaking to you? You can understand what it's saying? Yeah, it says there's five of us and one soul. Maybe we've just all become one. Uh, yeah, that's that sounds like a right answer. Everything's been, This is a puzzle, right? We're not actually going to have to fight this thing. Everything else has been a puzzle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Riddler. tell it we we are one soul. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I speak <laughs> back and I say we are one soul. What does this soul seek? Guys, what are we seeking? Uh, I mean, I I think didn't the did the old man tell us to seek? Yeah, Fizzman said seek loot, but I don't know how <laughs> happy it's going to be if we say loot. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Focus, what he say? We are supposed to seek an item within the hollow, which is to be delivered unto the dragon cult. Uh, hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, I communicate that back to the monster. I mean, focus speaks in Draconic too. So. Oh, yeah, focus. <laughs> yeah, you guys can kind of tag team this. Yes, I uh, tell the dragon we are seeking an item by sent. We are sent to retrieve an item by Fizban to deliver to the Dragon Cult. Which item do you seek? I don't know if Fizban told us, to be honest, so... Do you speak yeah. common? He, he, doesn't re he doesn't answer you. Mm, he doesn't I'll take that as a no. <laughs> we are seeking the item in the hollow. You mistake yourself. The item is the hollow. Guys, Do you believe yourselves worthy? Yeah. What are you saying <laughs> yes to? <laughs> then show me. Roll in the all right. We have to show them that we're worthy, guys. You guys are I really shit diplomats. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it was like I was thinking of something to go along with what they said, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't immediately just try to stab him in the face. So Ryoko's grown a lot. I mean, that's you know what? I actually look. Focus looks over at Ryoko, recognizing this. Like this is growth. This is good. This is growth. <laughs> this is progress. <laughs> We're making gains, Ryoko. 
One soul, one purpose. <laughs> part of the ship, part of the crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so perfect. <laughs> uh, All right. So the very second that he says, show me, he, he kind of inhales. And you see his fiery form engorge for a moment before he breathes out upon you uh, a white wreathed flame. And I need everybody to make a dexterity saving throw. Oops. Oh, ouch. Uh, Ooh, that's a 12. Ooh, that's a 12. Piss poor. <laughs> All right, everybody takes 54 damage. Mm. Radiant damage. Wait, 54? Oh, okay. 54. 5 4 radiant oh, damage. Ryoko's dead. <laughs> so, she just lays down on the ground calmly and just puts her hands underneath her cheek and just drifts away. <laughs> so Ryoko's not dead. Um, Ryoko, describe something from your past or childhood. Oh, um, so in my childhood, I remember hanging out with all of my siblings. And while we were hanging out, a mysterious wizard showed up. How detailed do I need to be? Or do you want me to be? Oh, that's up to you. This is your life flashing before your eyes. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not where I thought this was going. <laughs> uh, I remember specifically that my oldest brother stole from a very powerful wizard, and he came back, and he, I just see him slaughter every single one of my siblings in front of me. And um, he... Uh, I was able to negotiate a very rare jewel that I knew we had. Um, so I went over to a safe and I opened it. And uh, once my whole family was massacred, that's when I decided that I was going to negotiate this. And I just feel the guilt of allowing my siblings to be massacred in order to save myself. And then the wizard, I just see him taking a hold of the family estate and uh sent me out on my own to carry the grief of what i did because i really loved the the, the jewels that the wizard took and i was yeah. grieving the jewels more than my family damn <laughs> dang son <laughs> <laughs> all right van all right um it is uh ryoko currently unconscious yes ryoko is currently unconscious yeah, Susie's also oh. out, just a heads up, but I didn't want to barge in on that drop that oh. very traumatic. On the drama? <laughs> like not the drama, the trauma. So I meant to say oh. <laughs> Yeah, with I a mean, TV. It was yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was on a on a soul mission this whole time, so now you know why. <laughs> I like Ryoko's realization of her loving the jewels more than her family. I'd you like know? to th I'd like to think that she's like like she just kind of came to that like understanding now as she like <laughs> right goes there dying. dying. It's like you know what the guilt I feel is really like yeah I, I feel bad it. that I don't feel bad that they died. <laughs> taught me that along our journey. <laughs> That's a weird room. Right. Maybe the one soul thing this. really was her friend, just one of us being the only person here with a soul. <laughs> I'm all right. Gonna, we're, we're, it's Van. Yeah, Van. Please. <laughs> Van is going to go ahead and twin cast healing word. Uh, so uh, both the ladies next to him will get healed for roll for seven. So you guys are back up with seven. Uh, Van is going to walk 30 feet. Um, I pointed at the screen as if you could see. Um, <laughs> towards the beast, but not straight, but at like a diagonal. Yeah, that way. Yeah, just so he's 
not in range of more breath weapons. And then as action, I'll go ahead and Eldritch Blast the beast. Um, we're level six. That's two blasts. Does a 19 hit? A uh, 19 does. And I'm assuming 11 does not hit. An 11 will not hit. All right. The first Eldritch Blast deals four force damage. And that will be ban. All right. Focus. All right. First, I'm going to... First, I'm going to uh, activate my Shield of Faith, which will bring up my AC. And then I am going to take a pot shot at him with my pistol. Being a wizard with a gun and all. <laughs> all right. Why my roll's been terrible tonight? A six does not hit, I guarantee you. You're right, but we've discussed that pistol before. As you take aim down the barrel of that pistol, your right eye uh, shines and flashes bright and brilliant blue. And yes. you fire off one single shot. I need you to roll me double damage. All right. That would be 21 damage. All right. You you just see a spark fly off of this massive golden faceplate from this dragon. Uh, but you also see it recoil. Ryoko. I have to do a saving throw, yes? Yep, nope, Rebecca. you're up. Van oh. healed both you and Susie, so you I missed it's... that part. Thank you, Van. Yep. Okay. Um, I am going to send my short bow towards him. So I would stand up for that because you're currently oh, yeah. on the I ground. <laughs> okay, I stand. That takes a turn, though, right? To stand up, that's one turn. No, no, it's just half your movement. Oh, perfect. I don't want to move any closer. So that worked out. So I'm going to stand up and then I'm going to send an arrow. Is he within 80 feet? He is. Yes, I sent an arrow towards him. All right, roll it. Twenty-five. Hell yeah. That hits. That's a nice solid roll. Thanks. I'm very proud of it. Heard the thud and everything. <laughs> I was like, that's going to be a good roll, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, seven damage. All right. And that ends my turn. Susie. Woo. Um, Susie is going to also stand up and then she's going to cast um eldritch blast all right then that is 21 to hit yep and then my d10 is right here um so that is eight for the first one and then my second one doesn't hit because it was a two but then as my bonus action, I hex it, or try to. Okay, he's hexed. I'm trying, sorry, I forgot if you guys get a um, saving throw for that one, so I was Googling it really fast. I don't remember. You pick a stat, uh, and they'll have disadvantage on that. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Sorry, I thought I was just making sure I didn't need a saving throw. Um, okay, I am going to, with my knowledge of dragons and its ability, can I take away like its sight? Mm. That's not an ability. Would that be uh, its like dexterity? I don't know. Yeah, so you get to choose yeah. an abil uh, ability check like dexterity, strength, Sweet. intelligence, wisdom, charisma. It has disadvantage on those checks. Cool, I'm going to do dexterity. Okay. 
And then I think you get 1d6 necrotic damage whenever I hit it with an attack. But since I cast that after, I realize I don't think that comes into effect yeah. until after. So go no. team. All right. Roland. All right. Roland's going to move 30 feet um, straight into combat with this thing in melee range. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I should, I'm sorry. Could I be off to the side? Uh, kind of like on the left. Like literally just move straight forward and then just kind of be. Yeah, there you go. About us left. Okay. Uh, I cannot rage. Use them all up in the feats of strength. <laughs> so it's going to be two unarmed strikes. Okay. Uh, first one is a 16. Second one is a 22. The 22 hits. Okay. Six plus three. All right. It's going to be six damage. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and use a stunning strike. Uh, I need a constitution saving throw. It's going to fail that. Uh, okay. It stunned. Nice. Yeah, I was not expecting that to work. Wait, okay. did it fail because of the dexterity saving throw? Just kidding. Oh, no, I wish. It's just a joke. Sorry. Those damn saving throws. Yeah, I, I feel like heck should definitely be the other way around. But anyways, all right, cool. So it's stunned. What can it do? Uh, it it's stunned. I believe it's if it whenever I make it turn, stunned until the end of your neck. Yeah, it's stunned until the end of my next turn. Stun condition gives it it is incapacitated. Creature automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws and attacks against the ro attack rolls against the creature have advantage. So and incapacitated is they can't take actions or reactions. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just yeah I'm gonna hit him with uh, my bonus action arm strike there. And that'll be, ooh, that's a 25, but I have advantage because he's on the floor. Oh, nope. And that'll be five more damage. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, incapacitated creature. No, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, that's my turn. Wow, I can't believe that hit. Cool. All right. <laughs> Back around to Van. All right. Um, so Van is going to go ahead and... Uh, see i haven't done this before so hopefully focus can benefit from it i'm going to go ahead and uh twin cast haste affecting both uh roland and focus Ooh. all right I believe that bumps up my armor class a little bit too yep plus two ac nice. um, minus three sorcery points and then van is going to go ahead and uh move even further, uh, it's really big, right? There's a lot of room behind the creature. Oh, so much room. Yeah, I'm going to keep going 30 feet uh, back behind it. And that's done. Focus. All right. One second. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is, how's everybody looking as far as healing is concerned? I think I'm good, just because I know that I can use on my next turn if I want to my healing light or pass out some scales, which I might do. Oh, by the way, thank you, Van. I was just reading over what Haste was doing. Oh, yeah. Over <laughs> Sorry, I was focusing there. Okay, so you uh, you could benefit from a little bit of healing, correct? I could, but As, you could save your spell slot for that because I can pass out scales for my scarves that heal like four forty sixes or sorry, ten d sixes or oh, something wow. like okay. that. Yeah, and then I have my healing light. So then I am going to use my bonus, my healing light ability, my bonus action to heal myself because i can actually use some of that then all right that healed me up nine health and i'm gonna go and take another pot shot at him with my pistol all right 12 to hit which is an automatic hit though so i don't Is 
So my first shot is going to do nine damage. But I'm going to take another shot at him. Uh, you have advantage on all those attacks. Yeah. Oh, well, they automatically hit with a critical anyways. Oh, okay. Next one, I'm going to roll. Man, it's a good thing this thing hits because I would like not be able to. And the second shot is going to do 11 damage. All right. And I'm going to run off to do more of a flanking movement to just a few spaces to the to his right. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And that ends my turn. Ryoko. Hmm. <laughs> I just discovered my rogue has two spells. Ooh. So I've been trying to figure out <laughs> what they do. Um, but for now, um, Can I use Hellish Rebuke on them? On him? That's if that is a reaction. You can only oh, use okay. Hellish Rebuke when you take melee damage. Oh, I see, because it says one reaction. Okay. Um, okay, I'm actually just going to use my short bow because I have no idea if the other spell that I have is useful. It's darkness. And it says it's one action, but it just makes everything dark. And they don't know that that would be helpful. So I'm going to shoot it with an arrow again. All right. Oh, yeet 20. Nice. Cool. Roll me damage. I'm glad I'm being useful in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Also, um, Roland is standing next to it, so you also get your sneak attack. <gasps> Yay! Okay. And um, it's a crit, so that all is double two. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean it's all double? So roll, roll your sneak attack die twice and your damage die twice. Oh, <gasps> that's so exciting. Okay. Twenty-one damage. All right. Anything else? That is it for my turn. Susie. Susie sees Ryoko being super effective, and so she plucks off one of the scales from her scarf and says "heal" to it, and then passes it to Ryoko. So she's going to move up to Ryoko to give it to her. And then um, that will heal Ryoko 23 points. <gasps> so nice. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Susie looks at the dragon and sighs in disappointment because hex only counts as a bonus action if you hit it. And I spent my turn healing Ryoko because she did a lot of damage. So she's going to be like, next time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. All right. Roland. All right. Uh, well, thanks to my hasted action, I'm moving a lot faster, I'm feeling bouncing on my feet, feeling lighter. I'm going to get behind this thing as it's stunned, and I'm going to hit it four times. All with advantage, thanks to uh, it still being stunned. Let's see. Uh, 19. Ooh. 15. That. Yeet 20. And 17. The 19 and the Yeet 20 hit. Okay. All right. 
I'm gonna do ooh, nice damage on that. Nine damage on the uh, first strike, and then the crit is going to be eight damage. Uh, and I'm going to first strike uh, another Constitution saving throw. Sixteen. That'll pass. Doing it again. This one fails. Yes. He's still stunned. Nice. I'm gonna keep that up. I'm feeling light on my feel. I feel the haze flowing through me. I feel good. Yeah, I hit him with another good strike and uh, keep him paralyzed. That's my turn. All right. Yeah, you're feeling really confident about that, but for some reason he seems to be able to shrug it off. He looks around the cavern at everybody, and then you hear the metallic scales uh, holding its fire together begin to clang, creating a loud ringing noise. I need everybody to make a constitution saving throw. Mm. Bro, bro. Sorry, man. Those legendary resistances. Yeah, I was typing that right in the chat. Like, oh, no, he found the legendary resistance. <laughs> yeah, I was like waiting. I was like, wow. that's. that's right. I was very surprised it, it went through the first time. I was going to give you that first one, but like, I, I just can't justify not using it. Fair. It was a seven to pass, right? <laughs> Boy, I hope so. Sure I did not roll well either. Uh, everybody takes 20 thunder damage as the sound echoes off the walls, except for Focus and Van. You take 10. All right. You know that haste that was on you guys? I'm sorry you guys lose a turn. Oh, don't worry. I'm already unconscious. Okay, good. <laughs> Susie decided to take another nap. <laughs> yes, Ryoko got tired too and laid down as well. Clip, I oh, I went down. That's like why. Twenty-four. That's why I lost. Uh, oh, we lost our haste. Yeah. Because oh, so is it just focus that's still up? Oh yeah, he can do this. He's got it. Get it, focus. But you're gonna need to be focused. So. But yeah, he also lost a turn because I went. I went down. I lost oh concentration. no. That. The yeah, bad side bad. of haste. But hey, man, what a good time it was while it lasted, right? Yeah. So as everybody goes down, the dragon advances all the way up to focus. He looks down at you. You can hear the fire in its throat creating a, a low rumbling growl kind of sound. And it is your turn. All right, so I'm going to look at him and say cool catchphrase here. <laughs> <laughs> we have not yet begun to show you how worthy we are. And then at this point, I am going to use my celestial revelation as two draconic wings just sprout from my back. And I fly into the air. Oh. Susie would be so impressed if she saw this right now. Exactly. That's why I'm doing it. Nobody sees me doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's clever. I like that. And I'm going to take a, for my action, I'm going to go take a pot shot out of him with my pistol again. You're keeping track of your ammo, right? Oh, I am. Believe okay. me, I am. <laughs> and I don't even know why I'm rolling to hit because you already said, yeah. Anyways. And that would be 12 damage plus 2 radiant damage on top of it. Okay. And I am going to use as a bonus action, I'm going to use my healing light and roll in. You got two D6s. What, healing? Yeah, get on up. Let's roll them. And I'm going to just fly along on that dude's backside 
or fly around, just kind of try to keep his attention gazed on me. And yeah, I just did all my stuff. That's it. I'm probably going to get swatted down. <laughs> how close are you staying to him? Like, how far up are you flying? My goal is to keep at it. Because how high can I fly? Oh, it's moving speed, so... I would say as tall as I can in the cavern, so probably about... The ceiling's 200 feet up, so oh, you so have okay. plenty I can't high. go that high. I'd probably say about, for now, 20 feet. Okay, cool. So you're leaving his area. That's why I was like, SWAT. <laughs> you said he was going to SWAT you, so fair enough. Yeah, I'm trying to stay out of his area. Like, I'm trying to keep his attention, but not, like... Yeah. He takes an attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, 30 to hit. Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. Uh, you're going to take 14 damage. Oh, yeah. And I need you to... You're down? Yeah, I'm down. Oh, that's what you mean by leaving his area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Okay. Focus and was like, no, man. He has <laughs> not yet realized that Roland is back up. Uh, Vanarin, you just give me a quick little flashback from your life. Um. So uh, he's currently remembering uh, Theric, the friend he left behind, and did not tell him that he was leaving. He's literally just like, yeah, I'm gonna go find a work in the city over there. Uh, and, uh, he's remembering, like, oh, crap, I should have, like, said something to him. If I just disappear, <laughs> uh, it's kind of really bad. Uh, and yeah, that, that's what I'll go with. Cool. Focus. Give me a flashback from your life. <sighs> Flashback of my life would be when traveling along the road with Fizban initially. Fizban imparting different knowledge, the importance of helping those, of helping more, pretty much helping mortal creatures, didn't matter how low many people considered them. All right. But stowing that wisdom. Ryoko, did you want to share another one? <laughs> I think mine's been enough. All right. Susie. Like uh, um, Susie remembers when she attended a wedding with the other forest gnomes, and she was sitting there, and she saw that the flowers looked a little wilted. So she tried to cast a spell to make them look better, but her wild magic took effect, and she accidentally cast fireball and set things on fire. <laughs> And that was the day that the people in charge of our little community said I couldn't hang out there during the day. And so I started my new thing of walking around the streets of the city next door and learned that I could learn information from people because nobody cares about a kid and became a messenger and started that lifestyle. Poof. All right, Roland, it's your go. Uh, Roland rolls on his side gets up sees his entirety of his party like on the ground um dying he's very confused as to how he's alive last thing he remembers is a horrible <laughs> sound and then he goes black <laughs> um but yeah he's up he's looking at this dragon yeah he just kind of grabs onto his uh bear totem amulet and uh yeah he fucking bear roars and runs at this dragon. Okay. Uh, do I have enough movement to actually get to him? Yeah. We're, we're saying, yeah. Wonderful. I'm going to Fury of Blows, Four Strikes, uh, going as apeshit as I can on this guy. Okay. Roll it. Right, 15 on the first one, but I'm pretty sure that's a miss. So I'm going to go ahead and use my bear totem amulet to re-roll that. 
There we go. 25 to hit on the first one. Yep. Second one's a natural one. Uh, is there a limit to how many times I can use that bear totem aside from the, whatchamacallit, the uses? Uh, from the charges, no, there is no limit. Okay, so I can keep using it as long as I have charges. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow them all here. Yeet 20. Nice. All right. That was, a, that was a good win to use it on. <laughs> so, yeah, I really lucked out on that one. Uh, 17, I'm going to... Fucking hang on. I got to actually pull up my item because I'm going I'm going to burn through all of them. You have five charges on that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm using another one. Oh, that was lower. 16. Okay. And then that's another natural one. I'm burning another charge on it. Another Yeet 20. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, all right. So three hit. Two three hit. Crit. Yep. All right. So first one, non-crit. Uh, it's going to be nine damage, max damage on that. Wish that would have been the crit, but no. Okay. All right. And then that's seven plus another D6. Ten damage. And then the last strike, I put all my force into this one, or maybe not. <laughs> wow. That one was pathetic. Uh, that was three, four, five damage. All right. And I stand before this dragon after unleashing pretty much everything I've got into it, panting, kind of expecting death. The dragon turns on you. It raises one massive metal clad paw and it brings it down on top of your head. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Guidance. <laughs> uh thankfully i might not need it 25 Woo. as it brings its paw down you feel a surge of inexplicable power like a rush just flowing straight through your body you bring your hands up and you catch this claw by two fingers Woo. and if you want this is your chance to say some real john wayne shit like something real cool <laughs> John Wayne, is he going to call it a pilgrim? <laughs> no. But... He's going to spank it. I think that's not. <laughs> this, this, is, this is Roland's moment. I decide I'm worthy. And I just fucking try to flip this guy off. Or flip him <laughs> off of me as, with as much strength as I can. I'm going to do you one better. You say those words. I decide that I'm your eyes flare to life with power. You can feel electricity streaking down your cheeks and your skin on your cheeks cracking open with this power. There's a shock wave that emanates from you and it fills the entire cavern. And when this shock wave dies down, this dragon has been pushed 20 feet back and all of your companions are on their feet everyone at full strength everyone's eye flaring with blue life and we're gonna end it there for tonight are we zombies now boot and rally baby <laughs> boot and rally and uh we'll see what you guys do with this next time full power wait does Yay. that mean full health full long rest that means full health and abilities regained. Oh, hell nice. yeah. yeah. I need my sorcery yeah. points back. I'll take those. Let's go. <laughs> uh, the only thing that's not regained, uh, Roland, are the charges from your... Uh, my item. That makes sense. Your item. And my bullets. And nice. focus with bullets. <laughs> but like all sense. abilities coming from yeah. you guys. Features are and traits good. like that. Anything that would come back on like a normal long rest, uh, not like charges and magic ups. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, awesome, awesome. And that's it. Oh, man. I'm honestly amazed at how well we did with the puzzles, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After that first one that took like 20 minutes, that went like really, really smooth. I'm telling um, you, man. There will man, be no we... puzzles next time. So anybody that did <laughs> the puzzles, you will be uh, sorely disappointed. Uh, but we will see everybody next week for the exciting conclusion of why is this thing on fire anyway? <laughs> Boom. Bye.